one of the big things I try and do is, is present a way of thinking through how the uh, dominant landscape in, in North American agriculture and, and a growing presence on a world scale, the industrial grain, oil, seed, livestock complex, how these environments are organized. And what I mean by that is a small number of uh, grain and oilseed monocultures that are devoted to a small number of animal species that are growing uh, very rapidly in scale. And again, this occupies close to a third of the world's arable land. Uh, coarse grains, uh, in especially corns, oilseeds, especially soybeans, flowing through a small number of, of animals, which again, which I've called the big three here, livestock, pigs, poultry, and poultry overwhelmingly chicken, and cattle, uh, and cattle, um, the least industrialized of those big three, but dairy cattle is industrializing very rapidly and the, fe uh, the feedlot uh, production of cattle is also uh, in increasing on a world scale. And so that's those systems of coarse grain and oilseed monocultures tied to islands of concentrated animals uh, occupies about a third of the world's arable land. And so these things are, are fundamentally interconnected. The huge grain and oil seed flows into uh, the, 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 the large and, and growing uh, populations of concentrated animals. So the, one of the ways I depict these landscapes is as oceans of monocultures, oceans of a small number of things that are flowing into islands of animals. And those islands of animals uh, are, again, both disarticulated from land but fundamentally dependent upon these huge flows of, of feed. So there is both this disarticulation of animals from land, but also the, the re-articulated through huge flows of concentrated um, uh, grains and oil seeds. Okay, so thinking through how these productive environments are organized is at the core of this, this conceptual framework and making sense of the resource budgets on one hand and the pollution loads on the other. Uh, so these are environments that very few people in North America see. Uh, so very few people will ever, in North America will ever see a pig or will ever see a chicken. Virtually all of that production is contained in warehouses um, that are um, not part of people's everyday um, sort of thinking uh, and, and, and they're sort of beyond the sight of, of most people and the, 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 the sight and thought process of most people. One of the only ways that I think people encounter pigs in North America anymore is when, they're, when they might see a transport truck carrying them on the way to, to slaughter. Um, and that, that is, um, again, I think a very uh, important part of this overall trajectory is the, the physical and the, the social and psychological distancing from animals. Um, for most of the history of agriculture, there was a very intimate connection to, to farm animals. Most people would have seen farm animals in their everyday lives. Well into the 20th century, most people lived in rural settings and they would have had a very clear sense of how animals lived and died, probably. In many cases, they might have even known the animals they were consuming, and they consumed them at much smaller volumes than they did today. But this picture here uh, sort of tries to indicate the fact that for most of agriculture's history, animals had this multifunctional role in farming systems. So they provided labor. In many cases, labor was the most important thing that humans got from animals. They provided condensed nutrients. So they, um, they spread their manure uh, around fields and, uh, and provided, uh, in some cases, a very important source of um, fertilizer, in some cases also a, a source of fuel, a manure used as a source of fuel in certain parts of the world. The animals also a fundamental um, role in moving things across space, and then other byproducts, obviously hides and wool. And then they provided some flesh and eggs and milk. And so in many cases, eggs and milk were more important than flesh and the consumption side of things. But what do I mean by that term, protein factories? That's actually not my term. It's borrowed from Francis Moore Lappe, who wrote a very famous book um, in the early 70s called Diet for a Small Planet. And what she meant by protein factories was to say, for most of agrarian history, animals generated protein, which was often relatively scarce in agricultural societies. They generated protein on the margins of crop production. So they generated protein by scavenging on crop stubble, by um, feeding off household food wastes by um, um, 
feeding off fallowed land and then returning, returning condensed nutrients uh, to the land. So they generated protein, but they didn't really compete with humans for the product of crop production. Now there would have been some crop production for overwintering animals in, in cold climates, uh, but for the most part, animals were generating this relatively scarce nutrient protein in, um, in ways that didn't compete with uh, uh, the cr humans for the, the product of crop production. Another thing that she stressed was that this consumption of uh, whether it be animal flesh or milk or eggs was on the margins of human diets not at the center and again this is a really important thing I try to emphasize with meatification is just how radical this dietary shift has been to, to the, the increasing per capita consumption of animal products so there's this fundamental rupture of um, the historic place that farm animals had in, in mixed farm agricultural systems. And there has been this kind of obliteration of multifunctionality. And now the, the sole function of animals in industrial livestock systems is to put on flesh as quickly as possible or pump out milk and eggs as quickly as possible. Uh, and so they don't, uh, they no longer return condensed nutrients to land. They no longer have a role, obviously, in moving things over space. Um, um, and they no longer uh, have a role in, in on-farm labor. They are, um, uh, again, designed to pump out flesh, milk, and eggs as quickly as possible. But the way they generate protein is, is fundamentally different than this historic place that animals had in mixed farming systems, and I'll come back to that. Um, so to think through systematically the environmental implications of this, uh, th this uh, industrial grain oil seed livestock complex, it's really important to think ag again about the biological narrowing that is necessary to enable economies of scale and mechanization. So that uh, increased scale, increased mechanization uh, creates a host of biological and physical problems that are never resolved, they're continually overridden. Okay, and this is a very important part of understanding the resource budgets and pollution loads of the system as a whole. So the mechanization is both in the monocultures, those oceans of monocultures, and the mechanization in the islands of uh, concentrated animals.